Welcome back to our channel. This is the second part of our diesel heater box build. So if you missed the first video, you might want to check that one out first. In this video, we mount the tie down straps for the fuel tank and we complete the wiring needed to run the heater off of a blue eddy battery pack. Probably gonna hit the fishing rods, isn't it? It's pretty tall. Can it go on its side? It's a seal that ass. It's a shell like this. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be using this battery or not. Mm -hmm. But I definitely will use these adapters. These are good for 60 amps. They're great. They're weatherproof and sealed, so. I'm going to have to solder on a fuse and then one of these uh, XC60s. Just put it in. Quick disconnecting. Yeah, because you want to take this into charge my house, right? Yes. So uh, I, I, uh, I'm installing a watts up meter. Uh, the reason for this, guys, is when we go to do a test run, I can actually measure the total amount of watt hours or amp hours. So I want to actually see, based upon runtime, how much watts it's going to take. I know this battery is probably not going to be big enough here, but at least it can give me an indication on what this this is like at full uh, full capacity, and then what it's like at half and a quarter, so I can get an idea on how much wattage I'm going to be using. So I'm going to have to put an end onto here, which we'll do shortly, and then I should be able to have this completely operational. So, uh, Love these things, you just twist your wire together, and this shrink wrap has got low temperature with flux soldering stuff. So you put this over in the middle, and you can shrink wrap it, seals, and it'll actually solder all at the same time. There you go. Just gonna let it cool down. And then yeah, we're all, uh, we need to stick an end on this. That's what it looks like when it's when it's cold and it's sealed. But it completely seals everything, completely waterproof. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the uh, heat shrink over it. It's a problem when you work at home, you don't always have all the right size stuff. So you make do with what you got. So put another layer over here. And this is where I'll put the other connector, the uh, XC60. All right, that's done. These XC90 connectors don't need very much. Um, wire stripped. So what I'll do is I'll get the soldering iron out now and I'll tinge these wires first then I'll put a thing of heat shrink again over here and then we'll put the XC60s on here. This is my mobile repair kit. I 
really like fixing things and doing DIY. So this is a uh, this <laughs> yeah I know this is my soldering iron kit. And what I really love about this kit is um, the uh, I think this is it uh, a T uh, T100. This can run off anything from 12 to 24 volts. So I have an old uh, laptop adapter here that I can plug into here, but I can actually plug this in uh, via 12 volts again, and I can make a mobile solder repair. Um, I actually have a, a little soldering base that I can clean the tip off of. I carry some high quality uh, circuit board solder, solder sucker, and uh, yeah, so this is what I'm going to use today just because I want to get a small repair here. Not a repair, but a uh, putting an end on. But that's uh, yeah, that's my mobile setup. Um, and it can run off the car battery. So pretty neat for doing stuff in the field. So it's got a working temp. So I'll put it up to uh, maximum of 400 degrees. I'll let this heat up. In the meantime, I'll take some flux. Straighten this out as much as possible here. So, for those who don't know soldering, you put a little flux on, and that'll make the uh, the solder go into the wire nicely, and also make it stick. So, so you can see it climbing in temperature there. It actually heats up fairly quickly. See that? That comes out that well in the camera, but that's what we're looking to do here. There we go. Last thing you want is what you call a cold soldering joint. You don't need much. So you let it have it until it completely floats to solder. And that's what you're looking for. It's completely filled up in there. A little bit of fluff. Yep. Hopefully I got enough of it left. It's my good stuff. I guess we'll plug her in her and see what happens here. I got no diesel in here, but I'll put it, the uh, 12 volts on to see if this thing will do the clicky click and turn on. And I'm, I'm not going to keep this. Um, I'm not going to keep this on. I'm just going to use this when we go and do our test in the field. So I'll, I'll run it off this, but this will this will come out. This is just to test how much how much energy I'm actually going to use. As you can see, we, had, we got 12.7. We have the unit that's got power on. I'm not going to keep it running. I'm just going to try to hit on and you should hear a tick, tick, tick. Okay? Low plug. We're pulling uh, six amps right now. 
75 watts. I'm going to turn it off. So it's heating. So that's good. I can smell it. Cool. So she needs a little fuel. <laughs> and a and, test weekend. And a uh, couple of batteries. This is for clamping and turn up the heat right from the inside of the tent. <laughs> that excites you. <laughs> All right, so this is a little uh, discouraging. So I look at this this fuse and it's 15 amps. I need at least 10 amps to run this diesel heater and plus some lights and whatnot in there. So I'd like to try to keep it the source at least at 15 amps. When I took this thing apart, well actually when I cut it to put my own uh, XT60 on there, see how thin this wire is? There ain't no way in the world that that's going to be good for 15 amps. Shame. So anyways, I'll have to take this all apart and make my own end piece that's, uh, that's better rated for, for the load that's going to be on here. So I anyway, thought I'd show you that and then uh, I'll show you later what I'm going to do to make my own piece. is called tinning the wire. You do this so you, um, when you go to solder it on to the other thing you get a better bond. So, this makes it a little easier. Start off by putting a little flux on. You don't need a whole lot at all, just a little bit. That actually makes the heat transfer better too. Okay. I don't know, this, it's not really meant for this, but this is a, uh, a circuit, uh, circuit solder iron tip, but uh, let's see what we do here. Too bad! Now for the positive side, I'll drop a flux again. That's what you're looking for, complete. So there's no cold soldering joints, so it's through both sides. I'll let this cool off and then we'll try to put this back together. So this is going to be right fiddly. I'm trying to get this all in here. It looks pretty good on that side. Get Humpty Dumpty back together here now. We'll put this on the end first. Well, I'm much happier about that. How about you? Yep. I'll take your word for it. Probably rate it for better than 15 amps now, but uh, anyway, so that's much better than uh, where was that other wire? Just to show you guys how much difference there is there. Might be hard to see on the camera, but uh, you know that uh, that's probably rated for 10 or 15 amps, but certainly not this. So you can see there's quite a difference in size here. Um, between the two different types of wires. So that's why we did all that. Uh, you know, just to be safe about it. Not that I wanted to do that, but uh, so anyways, so now that's rated for what it should be rated for. Good. Let's 
started to prime itself. Thanks for watching. If you're new here, please subscribe. It really helps us grow our channel and we appreciate everyone watching. Have a great week everyone and we will see you next Sunday for another adventure.